Oh, YouTube. Meet from the bedroom here. You're a guitar junkie. So, what do we have here? I'll tell you what we have here. We've got two USA Gibsons. And let's give them a sound check. And then I'll...
Yeah, man. Yeah, it's good. So, yeah, I really, this is my, look, this is my silent cord. It's got that little coupling in there, so you don't hear that until you plug it in, and then when you unplug it, you don't hear that, you know, that open, this here. Kind of thing. So, I ran it over so many times. I destroyed it. And now these things are going for like 70 something dollars. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I'll just hit standby if I have to. But in any case. So yes. Two. American made. Les Pauls. Gibsons that is. Texas tea. Black gold. <laughs> There's money in them there, Hills. So, um, all right. Where do I start? I be begin with this. I'll begin with this one here. This is a 92 Gibson Les Paul Studio Light. All original. And I'm still waiting for the tool. Again, Amazon, right? Um... <clears throat> I got this last Friday. Today is Wednesday. Still no tool. Every time it's like, oh, you know, spend 25 bucks and you'll get it overnight delivery. I spent 25 bucks with Amazon's, uh, uh, you know, uh, items and didn't receive either one, <laughs> the tool or the treats from my dog, me dag. So after two days of not receiving that, cancel that, place another order, and that's supposed to come tomorrow. I placed that one last night. So I set this up without adjusting the neck as best that I can. And the action is a lot lower. I don't have buzzing. I feel like the action can get a little bit lower, like the action that I set on this guitar and on all my guitars. It's set like this. Not too high, not too low. But when you bend the string, you sh your finger doesn't roll over the other strings and your, your finger doesn't slide under the other strings. This one here is just a, a slight higher than all my other guitars. <clears throat> but way better than when I first played it in the, in the guy's garage last Friday. So, and the buzzing is gone because I was getting buzzing right here on the flat, you know, from, from the, the 12th fret up nothing up here so um yeah the uh even even if i just even if i never got the tool <laughs> and adjust the uh, was able to adjust the neck it plays way better than when i first got it and i told the guy i'm going to take a chance on on being able to uh set the neck on this guitar before i could literally launch an arrow and i done a video on that on one of one of on a guitar I don't want to bring it up again and uh, I actually shot an arrow <laughs> with the guitar um, so yeah this is the uh, the uh, light it's supposed to be um, weight relieved something like that it is it is slightly heavier than this so from what I recall um, they have like three tiers of the weight relieved chamber chamber um, chambered bodies they have it with the holes being uh, drilled into it then they have it with a like a long let me show you on this one like on that they have it where there's holes drilled then after after that they had it where they're long like teardrops. And then they have it where just the whole wood is pretty much routed out. That's the chambered one. So this is slightly lighter, but then again, the mahogany neck and body could be different because the weights always change on mahogany bodies than this one. This is all mahogany neck and body as well. So um, both of these have a great, great flipping neck on it. I mean, it's, 
I wish every Gibson I grabbed had a neck like these two guitars. Um, they say this is a remnants of a 59, the, the 92 lights. Man, I just, this neck is, is sweet. It's got an ebony fingerboard. And it, what it looks like is um, pearlized plastic trapezoid inlays. I think, I'm not sure what the nut is because I don't, I don't even know if I read any information on what kind of nut it is, but it's definitely in need of either sewing machine oil or I, I had a tube of graphite. I thought I left out somewhere. Oh, I think I put it back in my bag. Guys take the, uh, the you know, you can loosen the string, pull it off the, you know, the nut. And a lot of guys use pencil because pencils aren't made with lead anymore. I hear a lot of guys saying that in videos. They're made with graphite. So they use a pencil to, to dock it in the, um, where the string slot is. And then put the string back to use the graphite from the pencil. Uh, I just have graphite, um, you know, a tube of graphite. So I'm just going to do that. And, and it's easy. You don't have to take the strings off. You just loosen one string at a time, pull it out of the slot, put you a drop of graphite in there, put the string back and tune it back up again. So yeah, sweet, you know, one piece neck, uh, headstock set into a one piece body. And it's just, it's beautiful. Plays great. Like I said, if I get the uh, the tool to set the neck, I can get it a little bit lower, and then it'll it'll play like butter. And I said that, again, and I, I didn't want to say that. Like I never played with butter before. I never <laughs> I never took a stick of butter and you know went up and down the strings with it. So uh, it's just it's a saying I didn't invent, but something I'm I'm repeating from hearing someone else. It plays like butter, you know. Um, so <laughs> so yeah. Uh, old uh, um, ebony fingerboard on here, nice clothes pour, and um, it's just in, in the frets in need, in, in need of stainless steel. I should slow it down so I don't so speak like that. And the uh, fingerboard is in need of some oil, Earl, as well. So, <clears throat> yeah, original tune is on here. What I had done was I already changed the button. Uh, ends the strap button ends to the big Gibson ones because the ones that were on here were too small and although I didn't have an issue with it I was so afraid of the strap sliding off of it you can see the horn on that button it's a lot wider and it's these are the same button uh, that buttons that I have on all my even my agiles so just change that the tune is on here, a Gibson tune is. So again, these, the guy, it feels like the guy put nines on here, which is sweet. But every day I, I, I play it, I check the tuning, play it, check the tuning again, put it back on the wall. Came in today and the tuning was off. So I don't know if it's, um, because he's got them wrapped like three times on every tuning key. So I don't know if it's the tune is or if it's the fact that I have to oil the nut. I don't know. But, um, and then, you know, once you put it in tune, pretty much stays in tune until, you know, when you're done playing it. And then when I double check it before I hang it back up, it's pretty much in tune. I think what it's doing is it's just accolating to the temperature in the house. Um, you know, it, we went from, from, having the heat on to you know cranking the ac yet again because we're in florida so um i think it's you know i think it's it's that i could be wrong what do i know so this here that one's old this one's old that one's older that's a 92 this is a 2016 um i think it was a limited run on these and it is the uh, Gibson Les Paul Tribute. And, you know, I just, I never wiped it down. And now that I, I'm, I can see with that light on, it is very dusty. And this was just brought into my Guitar Center store. And um, 
I, you know, I, I actually bought it before they could sell it because of the police hold. Every state is different, but down here, there is a police hold, just like a pawn shop, where they can't sell it for 14 days. Uh, you know, you, you sell something to them and you have to provide a driver's license, some form of ID, and with your address on it. And then um, they hold it to make sure that it's not stolen, which is cool. So I had to wait just a couple of days for this. So I don't know if it was like this, sitting in a guy's house, covered with dust before he brought it in. So I don't think Toss Center accumulated this much dust in a couple of days. And I see guys selling guitars on the on Craigslist. They take a picture of it, man, and it and it, it dusty as heck. I'm like, clean that. So yeah, this is 2016, um, uh, 1960, with the reflector knobs on here and the um, the spindle pegs, the volume and tone. Um, pins on there so you know where you're at with the 60s wraparound bridge I mean it's a, basically the same tailpiece on every Gibson but this one here it went in this way and over the top um, standard bridge on here and <laughs> I was concerned about the tuning with that you know but man this thing stays in tune with no issues it's got the Gibson Deluxe tuners on here, and you can see where it says, you know, 2016, made in the U.S. And this thing, you know, I don't like the tuners when I actually use the tuners. I don't like the way they, they turn. They're not smooth like the ones on, uh, that are um, Gro uh, Grover's. But nevertheless, once you get it in tune, that's that's basically it. And again, I I'm, I don't know what the nut size is on here, as well. And um, the acoustics on this is pretty good, I have to say. This has your two-piece maple top on there, and doesn't have as many fish eyes as that one does um, which is like bird's eye maple that's where the maple's been in water and it starts to do that to the wood um, I call it fish eyes because you know I, I worked in the auto glass industry and go into a body shop they could spray the car and you could see that there was dust in there and they have fish eyes what we call in the clear coat or in the paint which is the worst so um, yeah, um, not good on a car, good in wood. But, and if you could see it, it's, you could actually see the layer that it's a, it's not a veneer, it's a top, but it's very hard to see. You know, it is, it is not just a veneer, it's a top on here. So these P90s sound great, and I played it clean. I actually took the, um, crunch off of the clean channel and brought the gain down to five. I had it up like three quarters of the way um, between eight and nine just to drive it some more. But I kind of like the clean sound now, which I never did with the Marshall um, unless you crank it. And that was it. I have the reverb on, which I never use reverb. And I just ran it through my uh, my Demons FX Andy Timmons clone pedal that has overdrive and boost two in one separate volume knobs, um, and it's got a three way toggle where I could change the wattage from 25, 50 to 100. And um, you know it's a great pedal, sixty two dollars off of Amazon, and that's all I used. And I when I go through my crunch channel dirty channel on the amp I always have that on either either the boost because it's a, a powerful dirty boost or the overdrive and the overdrive is like nine o'clock just to stack it because those are the rules that's the law you got to stack a pedal a boost pedal or an overdrive pedal 
not have them, you know, on 10, but with an amp, because that's where you get your, your great sounds from. And I'm not touching this amp. I finally got this amp to sound like the six, the 70s, um, you know, classic rock tone without having it sound too much like, like metal. So, and, it, and it's kind of sounding like that so far from what I've noticed through the headphones um, when I play it back. So, you know, <laughs> I'm afraid to touch anything on that amp now. I was, I touched a couple of knobs. That I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know why, but everything was different and it took me a couple of days to, to find that sound yet again. So yeah, these here are sweet guitars, 2016, 92. This one, the guy was selling for 800 on Craigslist and I, I traded him my, uh, my Mexican made Fender Telecaster. And this one here was selling for, I showed the, the tag in the video I actually made on it. I think it was 999 or 995 or something and change. Um, with the Gibson um, very thick padded USA gig, uh, gig bag. This one came with the USA Gibson um, hog shell case, you know, the brown one with their, you know, it's like pink on the inside with the blanket. So here you have it. And this is for the guys that were ripping me apart, all the, the purest Gibson snobs. Um, I do like Gibson. I did have Gibsons that were USA made custom shops. I had, I had all of them you could imagine. And, you know, that was back in the day and they were great back in the day. I wasn't really much of a Gibson guy. Now I've stepped into the Gibson world and I've gone down that rabbit hole and uh, I can't come out of it. And uh, I don't mind. So um, yeah, you can see the maple top on here by that, that border going around. That's the same as the same size as this one. So yeah, I, um, I went down that hole and I'm enjoying it. It's uh, the, the Gibsons are what, you know, a lot of my friends were telling me all the time. And uh, these are fantastic. But again, this is between 2012 and 2018, where I was only told they had the worst years making guitars. And I got very lucky with this one. This is the one out of 100 that was came out of the, the warehouse that day. That is perfect. So I had one guy saying, uh, posted a comment, some guys are, um, you know, uh, spam guys and some guys are lobster guys. I think you're a spam guy. Based on the affordable guitars that I'm showing that are, in my opinion, better than Gibson for the price. And, um, you know, I could still compare one of these and take any one of these Agiles off the wall. And as great as these are, if these were the price of the Agile, I would say sweet. I would say that they're, they're, they're equally just as good. But when it comes down to price, you know, <laughs> used, um, no, to me, you're just paying for the Gibson name, but it's a hit or miss with the quality, with the Gibson quality. And, you know, these are cool. I'm digging them. So thanks for watching. And, uh, I have, um, I have other, other guitars. Uh, I've got another, I've got an SG Epiphone inspired by Gibson custom shop all natural that's coming so stay tuned if you want to see that one thanks for watching everyone have a good day and a better tomorrow so sorry that the videos are running so long but people are going to ask me if i leave something out in the comments anyway so i try to i try to pack it you know what i mean yeah